Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about in a recent video I did a small compact 10 C's kit that I put together right quick and talked about small kit. And in case you missed it I'll put the link right here. In that video I put this knife which is a old timer 2250T into the kit as the knife and many of you commented Blackie I would have expected you to drop in your Swiss Army Field Master. The Field Master is a great tool for the uh, woodcraft, bushcraft out in the field. It really is. It's got all the tools you need and I really enjoy it. It's my EDC. However, I chose this one. Now, let's back up just a second. The lock back and this size, this one, however, is a lock back in the saw, but it is not a lock back in the blade. And let's talk about that a second. The lock back is sort of like the bastard stepchild of woodscraft. It's almost been forgotten, the folding knife. Now, the Swiss Army knife has stepped in and, to a degree, rightly so, taken over much of the small knife duties, the open L. The Swiss Army knife is the small knife duty, the small thin blade, the tiny blade, the detail blade in our kits. And then, of course, there's the field knife, which is like my Blackbird, my WC Blackbird knife, or the larger type knives. Well, there's an in-between as well, and that is this size knife drops into that size. It's kind of been forgotten, but let me insert a picture right here of Nest Monk's rig, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now you see, Nest Monk had a belt knife, he had an axe, and then he had a folding knife, something about like this. That was because, and when you look at the size of it, it was probably about that size of knife, or pretty close to it. This was a bushcraft, woodscraft knife unto itself. He did a lot of the whittling and stuff was done with this knife, this size knife. And so on that line, I want to do a couple little videos. This is going to be the first one where we're going to talk about the forgotten knife, the folding knife. Now, this one we're going to do today. In the near future, we will be doing the Buck 110. I know you guys are going to be throwing that down there in the comments. And I'm also going to talk about the K-Bar 1607 because of my personal knowledge of that knife for 20 years. And so let's talk about what this knife brings. First off, it is a good size. It is thin, so it slides into a pocket or whatever well, and it's not too big and bulky. It's very robust made, so it's not flexible. Many of your folding lot back today, especially the hollow ones, are not. They're meant to just open up and cut a box or something like that or use as a pseudo self-defense knife. This was meant to be a field knife, so it's a lot more robustly made. And you can feel that when you go to pull the spring and you got to pull that spring. Even though this one doesn't lock, it's got a tight spring. Even to close it is tight. And that tells me strength. Okay? A nice broad bolster up there that holds it real well. And it's got a good angle to it. When you're holding it straight in your hand, see the downward sweep to it? It fits in the hand well and cuts well. Now back here on mine, I don't know if all of them, but this part of the blade right here has got a 90 degree spine on it. Which means that it will be fine for shaving bark and for making tender piles to ignite with a ferro rod. Right back there where it's just fine. Now... This also has a saw on it, but let's talk about this in a minute. The handle curves so that when you're holding it in your hand like this, the point is in a straight line. You're not holding it like that. You're actually holding it comfortably like this, which puts that point in a straight line for doing the boring and etc. like to make a uh, bow drill set or something like that or make a little hole in something to pass a cord through for something to hang up or you know, etc. Boring is one of <laughs> boring is one of the toughest things to do when you're out here because you gotta have something that makes a small hole without wallering it out big enough to put a pinky through. And something like this could work on a thin piece of wood. It's also straight, it doesn't angle off to the side. And when you hold it, it slices well. 
which means that when you engage and you cut, you go to go away from you, the full length of that pull makes feather sticks and stuff like that easy. And so it'd be easy to utilize this for making fire prep and stuff like that. Now again, this obviously is not something I'm going to be splitting firewood with. Why would you split firewood? Why not just pick up off the ground and bust and kick, put it upside the tree and kick it and bust it? That's what I do. The only time I ever have to split something down, like we think of batoning, would be to make a fireboard of a given thickness of splitting it out of a core of something else. Other than that, uh-uh. So these knives work well, and I have 20 years of knowledge with something this size as a field knife. So I'm speaking from experience here. Now the blocking blade on this one is actually the saw blade. And as you can see, it has a in line that snaps in right there and locks that because the blade is going to be pushed and pulled and the danger is it will close. And so they made that blade locking. That's a pretty substantial saw and the teeth are nice and aggressive and they cut on both the push and the pull stroke. So let's utilize this right quick to make a little commonly made little thing. Let's make a tent stake real quick. And I think that I want to take from right here to about Oh, right about there. So I'm going to take this over here and cut it. Couple little strokes around. Snap it off. Come down here where my next one is, same way. Go around, you go all 360. Snap it off. You don't have to go all the way through. Just make a 360. Now, looking at it, I'm going to crown it off. I'm going to put my notch right here to put my rope into. So with that, I'm just going to take this and going to do a couple of quick cuts. Just bearing straight down and drawing it straight through that loop. Just like that. Doesn't have to be terrible deep. Just like that. Now I'm done with the saw blade. I have to unlock the saw blade to close it. And again, that thing's got a spring on it, boys. It snaps. You open it up. Now I come in there with that notch, and we'll use it as a stop cut. I'm going to come down here about a half inch. And I'm going to quickly cut up into it, just like this. Notice how my thumb's on the back, and I'm rolling into it. Just like that. And thus we have a notch right there to hook the cord into. Now we're crowning off the top. Simple to do. Crowning it off when we pound it in the ground will keep it from hammering out and flaring out and splitting on us. Just a few little strokes to crown it out. Now down here a point. I'm going to do stiff arm and pull back toward it. Once you get about a third of the way, flip it to the other side. Same way. Alright. When it's about a quarter left, quarter thickness of what it was, jump to the two sides. Just like that. And then you have A tent stake. It's not bl it's not thin, so it doesn't snap off. But it's not exactly blunt either. Take that piece right off that end, just like that. A few little touch-ups for camera work. You know. There. 
That's all I need to make a tent stake out of. A notch, so that when I angle it away and I put my cord in there to lock into it, and a flared head so that it can be hammered in the ground. That's it. Quick and simple. This style of knife is easy to control. This size of knife is easy for me to control as opposed to something bigger. Now in my youth, what I was doing was, I was carrying a knife from very similar to this size. That was a K-Bar 1607, a big lock blade. Lock blade. I also had a small barlow in my pocket. The small barlow was razor sharp and used for detail work. This did the job of like a bushcraft knife. Think of the job that a Mora would do. That folding knife rode in my pocket, but every time I needed in camping or whatever, to make a tent stake or something like that, I bring this out. Because usually I had a much bigger, more awkward knife. I was into big buoys and stuff back in them days, and it made it awkward to do these little detail work with it. I was learning. And so like Nesmunk, I found that the folding knife was sometimes the best choice. It was easy to handle, easy to sharpen, easy to control and do detail work quickly and easily. And then that, I could save that big knife for the big jobs. Now, how many deer, small game and stuff, I clean with my knife about this size. I have lost count eons ago. I have cleaned everything from a chipmunk all the way up to a full, bone, a full grown bull cow. So, yeah. You can do a job with them. And so many people. And what this was set up for, this knife was really set up for, was a hunter going after big game. So that saw could cut the breastbone, cut the ribs free to get those big hunks of meat off of an elk, a moose, or something like that. And yet be a textured grip, that textured derelin that allows you to keep a grip on even when your hand is bloody and you're trying to cut up big hunks of meat to process. Because quite often when they're hunting in big animals, they're not taking the whole animal. You're taking the big hunks and trying to get back before the bear shows up. And so that was this type of knife. Came in a, a brown leather sheath to carry on your belt, or it can fit into a pocket. But for bushcraft and woodscraft, these things do deserve some respect. No, they are not pry bars. Neither is a mora. But black eye can't baton with that. You're not supposed to baton unless you got to to make a fireboard or something. Anyway, uh, the, that's not the design for this. If you want to carry one of them big, super heavy uh, pry bar belt knives for that, go right ahead. It can work as a fro, but this will do the, the detail work, the finesse work. That's the whittle of tent stake right quick. That's the quick and handy cutting up. And what's the number one job you're going to do with this? Preparing food because you're going to be cutting up that sausage, you're going to be cutting up that meat, you're going to be cutting up the fish, you're going to be cutting up the vegetables and stuff like that, peeling taters and etc. That's what this knife does because it's been my experience in 50 plus years now of being in the woods that the most common job of a knife around the camp is something to do with food prep other than when you're carrying pre-made meals. And so this is what's going to be utilized for that type of job. So, in conclusion of this one, I just want to point out that these knives are worthy of respect as part of an ensemble, okay? I have my daily carry with the scissors, the little saw, and etc. of my Swiss Army Knife Field Master. One step up this knife. This does the job of a mower, but it's a folding knife instead of carrying a belt knife. Okay. One step up is my full size belt knife. One step up is my kukri. And then we're into axes or machetes. See. And so for cutting jobs in camp, these can serve well, especially for those that really are kind of intimidated by a big belt knife and you want a small knife well there's a lot of good fixed blade small knives that work very very well but these are not to be discounted as a working whittling processing knife and so many of you ask blackie what was that knife because you saw it in that video and this one as i point out what things got spring on it is a Schrade old timer two 
like you ain't got a glasses on. 2250T is what this is. And it would be a very good field knife. Hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. There'll be more videos coming. If you've enjoyed it, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button before you go. I'd really appreciate it. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.